Hello, Startup Vision. My name is Elodie Geddon. I'm a professor of epidemiology and biology at New York University, and I'm also a molecular virologist. And today I'd like to talk about hydroxychloroquine. Hello, Elodie. Thank you for being back on Startup Vision. And, uh, you know, you, you promised that you would come back every week to give us uh, some news, some information, which is so important in this uh, health crisis. So, as you said, today we're going to talk about a difficult subject, subject, you know, the hydroxychloroquine. Tell us about it. Well, so you've heard, Florence, that it's being now touted as a potential good drug to treat uh, COVID-19. And there's a bit of controversy around all of that. So I know that in France, it's being uh, sponsored also by the government. And even in the US and in New York, uh, we've had in New York our own the governor of New York State that is also recommending trials for hydroxychloroquine. Now, as you know, also President Trump in the US has talked about it a lot. Now, in the scientific community, it's a, a little controversial, and I'll tell you why. Uh, when you want to use a new drug, especially for treatment of people who are very sick, you want to make sure also that you're not making making them sicker, obviously. Now, the way it's touted uh, in France or that it's being promoted in many parts is that it would be used for people who have even mild symptoms, anyone that's diagnosed with a positive case of COVID-19. Now, the studies on which they base this recommendation are a little controversial. First, when you uh, want to use any type of drug, you want it to be based on solid grounds and solid clinical trials. And the studies that were done testing uh, the hydroxychloroquine uh, were not done in a very rigorous manner. They involve very few uh, patients. Um, they also involve a design that is uh, a little bit a, a slim or flimsy, where they haven't really done the, the right controls for the study. Now, it could be that hydroxychloroquine turns out to be a, a good drug, at least for certain aspects of the disease, but we don't really know at this point. What is the this action of hydroxychloroquine? Well, so hydroxychloroquine um, has been used, so chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine have been used for uh, a while for different things. So chloroquine we associate often as an anti-malarial. Um, and so <clears throat> it's been used for uh, many decades for malaria, uh, but now it's used mostly for people who have autoimmune diseases. And so it's used in rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. And people who have these diseases require uh, hydroxychloroquine uh, because it has an effect that is anti-inflammatory and it controls the uh, inflammatory process that can be triggered by your immune system. Nothing to do with uh, the viruses, in fact. So it does have something to do in the virus in the sense that it also has a function where it will uh, change the environment of a cell. So when a virus enters during an infection, when it enters a cell, it basically changes the acid environment, the acidic environment in the cell, so that it can then be released within the cell so that it can make copies of itself. And what hydroxychloroquine does is that it changes the acidic environment in the cell so that the virus cannot be released. And if it's not released within the cell, it can't make copies of itself. So that appears to work pretty well in the lab when all you have in the lab are actually cultures of cells. So we can take cells and grow them and infect them with virus and then treat them with drugs. So hydroxychloroquine appears to work pretty well, even against all kinds of other viruses. It's worked against flu. It's worked against the previous SARS. It works against MERS, which was that other coronavirus we heard of from a few years ago. And it seems to work against this SARS-CoV-2, which is responsible for COVID-19. So now but this 
we started a study, a, large, a larger study, let's say, uh, in Europe and maybe uh, uh, somewhere else in, in the world. So when will we have the results and what do you think will happen? So the results, so they're being tested now for clinical trials and they're being tested in France, they're being tested in um, other parts of the world, they've done in China some studies in the US, and within at least, I think in a, in a few weeks, we will have uh, real evidence whether the clinical trials demonstrates whether hydroxychloroquine works or not. And these will be randomized trials and not based on anecdotal evidence, which is what we have now. So what, what are the, the, the counter effects or the bad effects of hydroxychloroquine? So hydroxychloroquine can actually uh, react with other drugs, and it's known to also have an effect on uh, cardiac conditions. So if you have a condition, it's counterindicated. It can also, due to its uh, cross-reactivity with some drugs, can also cause what's called retinopathy, which can lead to blindness and also uh, kidney trouble. So there are a, a lot of uh, secondary effects that are associated with the hydroxychloroquine. So they're, they're actually uh, quite toxic drugs and they have to be given at a, a certain dose that is uh, controlled and also for a limited period of time. And of course, Elodie, I'm sure you're telling people not to use it if they have some or if they could buy some. Uh, because it's dangerous and uh, to prevent, you know, the lack of this uh, medicine. Yeah, no, exactly. So people have been hoarding chloroquine and actually there's been uh, reports from Nigeria where people were auto treating themselves. So basically treating themselves with the drug and have died. And there are also cases where people uh, mistook the fact that there's the ingredient chloroquine on a, um, on a drug that they're using to clean aquariums, fish aquariums, and have been ingesting it and have died. Uh, do you see any medicine, any drugs developed as soon as possible? Do you have any information on that? Well, so there are a few drugs that are being tested currently, and they're mostly repurposed drugs, so drugs that have been used. Uh, one uh, that looks promising, it was against Ebola, and it also targets a specific protein that the, uh, an enzyme that basically the virus has and requires to replicate. And that looks pretty promising, and that is being tested also. And I think there are about uh, four or five other drugs that are targeting specifically the virus. So any kind of enzyme or protein of the virus that the virus requires for its own copying, its own genome, and making copies of itself. And so we will find out, too, whether these drugs work. And it should be soon. Please <laughs> let us know. Yes. Yeah, so um, the the hope is that actually in a few weeks we would get some evidence whether any of these drugs are working. Uh, but again, you know, clinical trials are always a uh, a process that can take uh, a little bit of time because when you do a real clinical trial, you want to take a population that is basically randomized, and then you wait for people to basically get infected. You don't infect them yourself, right? You can, in animal studies, infect them, but you can't do that with a human population. So you need to have a little time, so a few weeks, to see whether, uh, let's say in a month, uh, people who have taken the drug seem to not get sick, or you have more people that are sick who have not taken the drug versus people who have taken the drug. And you need large numbers so that the statistics are real basically, so that you understand whether the drug seems to have an effect and is associated with better outcome. Thank you so much, Elodie. It was so important for us to understand how this works and to, to have some hope. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again very soon at the start of Vision. And please come back when you have any news, any important information, we're here to listen to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Florence.